The video you are about to witness may startle you. It would not have been possible otherwise to sufficiently emphasize the frightful toll of the new drug menace which is destroying the youth of Morrowind in alarmingly increasing numbers. Skuma is that drug, a violent sugar, an unspeakable scourge, the real public enemy number one. Its first effect is sudden, uncontrollable laughter. Then come dangerous hallucinations. Space expands. Time slows down. Almost stands still. Fixed ideas come next, conjuring up monstrous extravagances, followed by emotional disturbances. The total inability to direct thoughts, the loss of all power to resist physical emotions, leading finally to acts of shocking violence, ending often in incurable insanity and direct admission into the Shivering Isles. In narrating its soul-destroying effects, no attempt was made to equivocate. The scenes and incidents, while fictionalized for the purposes of this story, are based upon actual Telvanni research into the results of skooma addiction. If their stark reality will make you think, will make you aware that something must be done to wipe out this ghastly menace, then the video will not have failed in its purpose. Because the dread skooma may be reaching forth next for your son or daughter, or your beast folk, your property. You can stamp out this frightful assassination of our youth by initiating compulsory education on the subject of refined sugar in general, but dread skooma in particular. That is the purpose of this video, ladies and gentlemen, to lay the foundation for a nationwide campaign by you to demand by law such compulsory education, because it is only through enlightenment that this scourge can be wiped out. Out of the traffic in these drugs, a lawlessness we can hardly estimate has grown and is now flourishing. It exists in almost every city and great house settlement in the country. It might be interesting and important for you to know some of the methods used in bringing these drugs into the country, and the work of the forces of law and order which are daily combating the traffic, always at the risk of life by their guards and ordinators. This ceaseless fight against the drug traffic is directed by the Department of Moon Sugar and Skuma in Mournhold. At least until the Sixth House is victorious in purging Morrowind of false gods, mongrel dogs, outlanders, and other such enemies of the Dunmer State. I've received a letter of vital importance from a member of the Moon Sugar and Skuma Bureau. I'm going to read this letter to you. My dear Daddy Dagoth, the suppression of the use of Skuma and of the forces lurking behind it are the most important jobs this department is now engaged in. At the outset of this letter, there is one vital fact I would like to submit. There is a powerful agency. I speak of the Sixth House and the tribe unmourned in this country, which can be invaluable in stamping out this scourge. Their help, their eternal vigilance, could be the deciding factor in our fight against it. The Moon Sugarcane, which is processed to create the dreaded skooma, is grown in every region of the province. Recently, in the city of Balmora, Vardenfell, a field of moon sugar was found behind a corner club. The sugar was here being cultivated, regularly centrifuged and refined, and sold at schools and Imperial Legion outposts in and around the Ascadian Isles. The crystallized moon sugar is heated and liquefied and stored in small skooma flasks that are often indistinguishable from Sujama bottles. The deadly sugar is thus quickly and easily prepared for its market. The sale of skooma is even more difficult to detect and halt than the traffic in other illegal goods such as levitation scrolls and dissident priest literature. The small skooma flasks are hidden in fake jewelry cases and in the hats of outlanders. Colovian fur helms especially because the drugs can be stuffed into the empty part of the absurdly tall hats. The stomachs of slaves are another medium, as Khajiit and Argonians make decent drug mules and they're not capable of human or elven emotions. The value of drugs thus seized is enormous. Recently, a huge supply of skooma was taken. It was concealed in an apparently harmless shipment of quama eggs. The deadly drug was burned in an incinerator of the imperial census and excise. Truly, there is no more vicious, more deadly, a soul-destroying drug than the menace of skooma. No doubt many of you do not believe that these things do happen, that they cannot happen to you. You may also believe the facts have been exaggerated. Let me tell you of something that happened right here in Vardenfell. You probably read about it in the Black Horse Courier. However, I'll give you the real facts behind the case. 
There was a salt rice plantation near a Hlalu settlement in the Ascadian Isles. It was run by a Dunmer noblewoman named Mavesa Colmano. Though of courtly birth and respectable standing in Dunmer High Society, Sarah Mavesa had fallen on hard times. A portion of her ancestral estate had been confiscated by the mongrel dogs of the empire to construct a new military outpost for the dissemination of outlander ideas like Argonians have feelings. The partial loss of land effectively halved Mavesa's profits from the sale of her salt rice cash crop, and she found herself in need of a new source of income to pay the imperial's excessive taxes. And so, she turned to the one man she believed could help her find a way out of her financial predicament. Jacosi Perinoth, her Dunmer lover, and incidentally a smuggler running unregistered slaves through the port of Sedanine from the mainland. This man, Jacosi, deviant rogue, let slip a conniving grin at Sarah Mavessa's plea for rescue. My darling Mavessa, said he, you've naught to fear, for in my travels I have found a new crop that will bring us fortune unlike any we've yet seen. That crop, my love, is called moon sugar. Astonished was she, our Sarah Mavessa, to hear such words from the lips of the handsome rogue. But Jacosi, she countered, is that not the same perennial grass from which the vile skooma is refined? Oh, my sweet Mavessa, worry not with these questions and leave the work to me, for you've only to wait for the prophets to come. And on that day, as you run your grey fingers through the mound of drakes I bring forth to your manor, you will be happy, for your troubles of the purse will have vanished, and you will return to the life of leisure that you are owed by your noble birth. The Sarah consented, and her slaves were sent forth into her fields to sow the wretched seeds of moon sugar. Jacosi sold the first batch of crop to paupers and peddlers in the nearby settlement. Profits soared, and Mavesa had the financial peace she'd been promised. But other seeds had been sown with the moon sugar crop, seeds of the mind, seeds of greed and avarice, and soon their operations expanded. But the Sarah's many slaves were Khajiit, and make no mistake, Kaj and Skuma go together like pigs and shit. Don't fuck with me, it's in the lore. Go check it out if you don't believe me. And it took little time for Mavesa's slaves to start sampling the goods. Before long, the drug-fueled slaves launched a rebellion. The overseers fled, and the master and mistress of the plantation were slain. And when the rebel slaves reached the Hlalu settlement to which Jacosi's skooma had been sold, they found a populace of sugar teeth just as addicted to the substance as they. Red Mountain erupted, and Tamrielic civilization collapsed within minutes. That happened right here, to your neighbors. It is not too much to say that in your hands lies the possibility of averting other tragedies like it. Failing this, the next tragedy may be that of your son, your daughter, or your beast folk. You have been warned.